Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, there she is, the lovely and attractive Lori Thompson. Hello, Lori. Hello, Alex. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I've watched you on, on many things the last couple of days because I've been taking my uh, my Roku channel and adding, yeah. adding stuff to it. And I've started adding some of the videos we made of doing the shows at like Live 105 and uh, I have one where I was over at the Quake, which you weren't on, but you're on several of these things. So it's kind of like I'm I'm spending time with a young Lori Thompson. <laughs> Lori Thompson. Yeah, well, we had so much fun, and we did a lot of shows. Those Breakfast with Bennett were yeah. always a blast because we got all over the Bay Area. And we did one at Palmason Winery. Oh, we did them all. We did them really. It went, uh, uh, where do we well we i'm trying to think of the biggest place we ever did one uh but uh usually the fairmont hotel the uh, venetian room of the fairmont hotel when we did breakfast with bennett's there uh Mm -hmm. was just fantastic it was and and then we moved over to what was bimbo's right and Uh, and the girl in the fishbowl Yes, yes, yes. They have a th- they have a thing in this club. It's called Bimbos. It's called, yeah, it's called Bimbos, um, <laughs> and it was a, a club. Um, uh, it was a big, major kind of nightclub, really classic nightclub, especially during maybe the forties and fifties. Yeah, it had a cachet. In and it. so yes. we did our our last couple of breakfasts with supper with Schwarzmans at Bimbos. And there was this thing they called the girl in the fishbowl. Yeah. And, and what was it, it, the, the girl was in the basement, lying mm-hmm. on a couch or something like that, with a, a t- fin tails, you know, mermaid costume with the tail <laughs> with the fin on the bottom. And then she would lie there. And then through a series of mirrors, I mean, this went back to the 30s or 40s, with a, a series of mirrors. It all went all the way up to the bar where there was a fishbowl and she was projected into it. Yeah, it was a pretty cool gimmick for the time. And you took, you went down there and I think you got on the couch and I went upstairs and saw you in the (laughs) fishbowl. My big fish, my aquarium debut. Your your aquarium debut, yeah. So yeah, we did have a lot of fun with those. But oh um, my god, they were a blast! You're going on a major trip this week. You're leaving tomorrow. Yeah, uh, yes, it's a big and, and, trip. And we are actually going to play this the day she's before she's leaving. Tell them where you're going. We are going to Lisbon, Portugal. To ah, start off. Yeah. And then we go through Italy and through France. And we end up in Rome, and it's a month-long trip. So that's the longest we've ever taken. Now, are, is to... this all by boat? Yes, it is uh-huh. all by boat. You're gonna have to tell me about that one because, you know, we're yeah. thinking of going boat. Marjorie doesn't yeah. want big boat, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're thinking of going boat, and the reason we're thinking of going boat is because we're t- too old to go any other way. <laughs> okay, because usually, well, usually, what I would do is I'd rent a car. And drive mm-hmm. all over Europe, but I just don't know if I'm capable of doing that anymore. If I'm, if I can drive, because I haven't driven in a long time. Yeah, well, the thing I like about cruises, and I had a lot of resistance because, as I've said, to me it seemed like elderly people in matchy matchy clothes playing shuffleboard, and I thought I'm not that person. Minus the I- shuffleboard, that's Marjorie and I. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing about you know and the. 
thing about that was that I had a lot of misconceptions. And so once I went online as a tester cruise, I found that you find your people. And there are some cruises that skew more elderly than others. And then some with, you gotta find your niche. And we've kind of found a, um, our cruise line, which is Azamara, smaller ships, like usually less than 500 people, and a really good uh, crew to uh, passenger ratio. Mm -hmm. And uh, they just, they don't do gimmicky stuff. It's not raw, raw. As we long, have, my, my, my cutoff point is I won't go on any ship that has a Ferris wheel. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that, that I, I saw one that I looked at, and they they, they were a huge boat, right? And they were mm -hmm. advertising seven water slides. Yeah, I mean, I, I, even two. Isn't a isn't a better. water slide since you're on the ocean redundant? Yeah, you know. Well, and and the fact if that you really wanted to make it interesting, have the water slide go into the ocean and then leave them behind. Well, except for the leaving behind part, I think that is a good idea. I would, I would like water sliding in the ocean. I just wouldn't be on a boat that had a water slide because that the the people it would attract would uh, just be a little too wet. So what we want is something. Uh, there's a couple of these things, like they say, I like more, some of the Viking tours. Yeah, um, say nice. say no no children. Yeah. You know, and it's not that I don't like children, it's just I don't want to have to be on a boat with them. Yeah. yeah, and plus it's a whole different mentality. A children means it's probably families, and you're gonna get all of that, all of the things that come with families. You know, some mini dramas, and uh, just a lot of noise. And tell me and about that, because I have no idea. I've never been a family. Oh. <laughs> you know, I never had kids, right? Uh -huh. You know, right. I've never been a family. Well, and and I, get, know, I get really mad when I hear all these politicians going, and what about our kids? Well, fuck your kids. You know, yeah, do something for me. I'm, I'm, I'm 84 years old. I need a little help. Come on. You okay. Know, get, me a see, get me a seeing eye, babe. Okay. <laughs> and, oh, and the service job. I, see, I have a little bit of an ax to grind on service dogs because I don't think some of these, I think some people just like to travel what, with Are pets. you talking about service dogs which are, you know, help the blind get around? You're, I think what you're talking about is um, um, uh, support, Comfort. support dogs. Support animals. Support yeah, animals. You know, I'm, I'm sure a, 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 a Labradoodle you know, <laughs> for these little <laughs> these little animals that are trying to pass off as support dogs. No, well, because because you can pet them and you feel good around them, and it calms you down because you've got anxieties and so on. Screw you and your support dog. Yeah, I mean, I think that they shouldn't. People shouldn't take them when they travel. It's just because dogs have a certain. They, you know, animals carry a muskier smell than we do. And on an airplane, last time we flew, there were three people with support animals, and it starts to smell like a zoo after a while. But <laughs> I just know by. I think there are a lot of people just skating in on that you know, support animal license that people seem to have. And I, I don't think there's any formal registration yeah. procedure, is there? No. I mean, so, no. so people are just, they're working that system. Yeah, I think you and, go and register your dog as a support animal or something. It's very easy to do. And then you can come along and bring your pet and inflict them on other human beings. Yeah, exactly. And then, like I say, with pets and kids, yeah. the noise levels are higher. Well, I and I'm not... Yeah. Pardon? I mean, I I told Marjorie, I said, well, we'll just test these things. I said, don't worry about it. We got the money to do it. Let's just test it. See yeah. if it works, you know, and, and if you're comfortable with it, fine. If you're not, we won't do it that way ever again. Yeah, but be game. That's my motto in life. And just I, be game. I, I want something where I don't have to get off the boat if I don't want to. You know? That's key, see? And sometimes as a couple that becomes a little bit of a conflict because sometimes I just want to stay on the boat and sit by the pool and meet people and hang out and you know have my soft serve. But Rick's like gung ho, you know, six o'clock in the morning, he's ready to go and, tra and trape us all around We're gonna the city. We're gonna go climb uh, Mount Fuji. 
Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like that. And I have a rule: I don't go on excursions that are that are more than four hours. But he still sneaks them in sometimes. But I think you know the rest should be up to you. I just want the boat to get me to these places. Does he sometimes get anything. pissed off because you're a little bit of a like? I want to stay back in the boat. Well, so of, far yeah. I just go along to be a good sport, but that's about to change <laughs> because it's just like relentless. Like on a normal vacation, well, you have a chance to plan. Yeah, I don't know how I would do doing a month like you. I, you know, a month is a little long for li living out of a suitcase, basically. Well, yeah, and I said, why would I want, when I have a, a two and a half bedroom house, why would I want to go and shower every day in a two and a half by two foot cell? Because the showers are, everything is condensed, and I'm slightly claustrophobic, and I just, I thought it doesn't quite make sense unless you're trying to prove something. Yeah. Like I'm a little skittish yeah. on the world cruise, so I told him if I get to the point where I'm just miserable and having no fun at all, I will take a plane home. And he said, "Okay." He said, "I'm not coming home." I said, "Then don't." No, I will. No. I mean, you'll probably it. enjoy it, but I think by the time you're through with it, you're going to be really happy to be coming home. That's what I think. Even after a month, this is the longest we've what been gone. I do that. I do. I think I did a three-week vacation once. Yep. Uh, when I left, uh, when I left uh, uh, Live 105, mm -hmm. uh, I booked a major trip, and I think that was three month, three weeks. And by the end of three weeks, I was pretty squirrely. You know. Yeah. See, and that's what. And, I'm it, and it's not that you mind being somewhere else. That's not it. You're just not. You know, I, when I'm home, I'm with my stuff. Yes, and there's your familiar routine, and you know if you're hungry, you can go to the just go get it mm -hmm. in your kitchen. But here, see, they're pretty good. As America's got something for food all of the time, and that's great. But it's not like you can just go in your house and go to the cabinet and get some cheeses. You know, yeah. you can do a little nosh in the night. Right. But uh, that's what. So yeah. I'm wondering about it. That's why I want to give myself an escape clause on the world cruise, yeah. which I have. But this one are you is e are you easy to travel with? I think so. Oh, okay. yeah, you were easy to travel. Well, you with. know what? I'm I'm easy once I'm on the vacation. The first couple of days before the trip, it's uh -huh. all, I start going nuts. See, that I have a little of that, but I got it out of the way last week. For some reason, I thought we were leaving last well, week. So but, I got all that anxiety out of the way. What it used to be is I used to be afraid of the fact that I, I maybe was going to go here, and then I had to make a train to go there, but it was I going to wake up early enough to make the train. What happens if I don't make the train? I go through all of that, right? And I start going yeah. nuts. I start driving myself nuts. And um, that was all fine, uh, but I, I wondered why I did that. And we had Spalding Gray on the show. The Swimming to Cambodia was his book. Yeah, with the knowledge. And who committed suicide, by the way. I know, how sad. Yeah, well, anyway, he committed suicide. But he, I said to him, I said, I have this thing, because I, we were talking about trips and so on. I said, I have this thing. And I told him what I told you. And he said, oh, I'm the same way. He said, absolutely mm -hmm. the same way. And I said, well, marvelous. Uh, why do we do that? And he said, because we're control freaks. See, that and I said, what? Well. And he said, yeah, we're control freaks, and we want to anticipate everything that can go wrong, so when it yeah. does, we have control over it. Right, and the things that throw you are not the things you thought of. It will be something that you never could have predicted. But I'm more a roll with the flow. You know? yeah. I, the way I look at it, spontaneity is one of our best gifts. Yeah. And you can roll with the flow because you're not going to be able to control every aspect yeah. of a trip. It just doesn't happen. You know, layovers yeah. and meeting your so, next plane. So, so basically, this is a is a Mediterranean cruise. Yes, is, is yes. what it turns out to be. Uh, you said, did you say you were going to Ibiza again? No, we're going to Barcelona though. Bar 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 Barcelona. Barcelona. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it, that's one of my favorites. Do you tours. remember um, when we were in Barcelona? You were in Barcelona with me, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you remember the Elton John concert we went to? Oh, gosh, I do. One of the most memorable like, concerts of my life. 
Yeah. You know, you, you really think, oh, Elton John, he's done a couple of hits. He comes out and for two hours plays one hit after another, and you sudden, and you suddenly realize the, the the breadth of this guy's talent. It was amazing, just amazing. Oh, he because he is an entertainer yeah. par excellence. Now yeah. I want to he, say that you've been doing something that was very nice. Uh, I told you that I, you know, I had these high white blood cell counts and this high lymphocyte count. Yeah, and um, I. Uh, uh, you know, I was kind of bothered by it, and um, I my doctor told me to go to an oncologist, and you started praying for me. Yes. Did you exactly. actually pray for me? Yeah. 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 That's what, and I pray that you'll have peace with whatever they find, just that you'll have peace about it, and that everything will work out. Because, you know what I mean? You know, Why should I ever pray when I've got somebody who can do it for me? <laughs> You got the Pentecostal in the pocket. Hey, hey, God, when I get up there and God says, you know, you didn't ever pray to me, I go, well, you know, my friend Lori did, and so isn't doesn't it count for something. Yeah, no, you I can didn't, coach actually, it. oddly enough, I say a prayer every night before I go to sleep. Is it, yeah, that's it's something reassuring. most people don't know about me. I don't uh -huh. think even Marjorie knows it. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's sweet. It's reassuring. Yeah. But anyway, so yeah. uh, because I had these health problems, you were. Uh, oh, well, let me, did I tell you about the report I got back? That the doctor didn't call you back or anything? No, he didn't call Is me back. Well, here, hold on a second. I still have one over here. Hold on. Uh, uh, <laughs> just stay where you are. Okay. Um, what he, what I went and I decided that what I would do is I would get the, um, the, uh, what do you call it? The, uh. The actual report that he did, the guy that he never got back to me? Yeah. Right? And yes. on page five, I get this. You can't it read it. Be, but no, it looks to be the diagnosis. Well, And it's in red, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, and the diagnosis point. that they made from this flow cytometry analysis was that I have lymphocytic, chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Okay, well, that was on page five. He never got back to me. He, never that, that's got back thing. to me. What are you know? What are you paying him for to know that I, something? Well, I, just well no, it's not me paying him. It's Medicare, but <laughs> you know. Uh, but I get I get this, and I look at it, and I go, uh, well, I better just print up the whole report, and I gave it to this new doctor I went to. Okay. Yeah. And he said, oh, I'm glad you did this. I you know this really is helpful. You know, sure. And uh, because Marjorie said, "Why, why are you printing that stuff out for him?" Man, yeah, and he he was, was it's in my files now over at uh, over at uh, uh, wait wait a minute, Marjorie is calling on my phone here. Your dog. Wait, your wait a minute, guy. Marjorie. Don't you know that I'm doing something I, with I Lori? Know, I know, but what did you want? <laughs> Hi, Marjorie. What? Chicken breasts and legs. What? What did you say? What did you want besides? Uh, I wanted uh, some um, the mozzarella cheese. Okay. Oh, no, wait a minute. I have mozzarella cheese. I don't need what? it. So you don't need anything? I just need the meat. I got the meat. Okay, bye-bye. Oh, okay. She, she knew I was doing something with you, and she called. But still, that's pretty sweet. A anyway, I mean, anyway, so yeah. getting back to this, okay. Yeah, the so, so I hand it to him, and I say... You know, this was on page five of that report. If you got that, that, you know, the following Monday or whatever, what would you do? He said, well, I would call you. Yes. And tell you yeah. there's something a little bit concerning in the report, right? Yes. He said, in fact, I'd call you even if it was all good. See, it's all <laughs> you know, good. You know? Yeah. Right? That is I said, I never heard from the guy. Never heard from him. That's, that's but, nutty. They, and they and they should, uh, <laughs> they said, where did you go? Place. And I said, I went to the cancer and blood specialist. He says, oh, them. Ah, <laughs> and, they have a rep. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. So um, I had that. And, and I uh, so I handed it to him. He said, what you have, he said, is 
chronic lymphocytic leukemia. I have leukemia, but but that's the that's the the worst possible the worst part of the news. The best part of the news is it's all good. This is it's a form of leukemia that people my age have a tendency to get. It's the most common leukemia in America and the most curable, not curable, but you but, never cure uh, it. The, the, the line they use is, you will not die from this, you'll die with it. Perfect. Okay. You know, we're all and he die said, as long as you don't have symptoms now, we're not gonna do anything. He says, your platelets are a little low, so I wanna have you come in in a couple of weeks about, eight, about uh, uh, what was it, uh, eight weeks or something, come back and we'll do another uh, platelet count on you. Yeah, just monitor and, it. And that's it, and we'll monitor you on and off. And I met this doctor, he's really great doctor, wonderful doctor, and he's very comforting, and he said, you know, all these high numbers you see in here are all a result of that same thing, you know? Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah. uh, none of the numbers are high enough that I'm concerned. Because, you know, when you look at it and they say blah, 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 high, and it's on a graph and it's up towards the top of it, <laughs> you, don't know what, you don't know what high is supposed to be. He said, you could be high on a lot of these things and it just never, you know, it's not horrible because it's not terribly high. Yeah, it's normal. It's within the standard. So he said, "You're in, you're in good enough. You're in good shape. You have no symptoms." He said, "Well, just watch it, you know." Yeah. And I, That's I wouldn't you're... mind going back to this guy every three to six months and uh, <laughs> dealing with him because he's a nice guy and he's a very he kind of makes you feel if you walk out and you feel better than when you walked in. So that that's, that's how it turned out. So I have leukemia. So now now I have an excuse for when Marjorie says, uh, "By the way, we ha you have to take out the garbage tonight." I go, <laughs> I, "I can't. I got leukemia." <laughs> so much better than my back aches. <laughs> and now this is this is That's my this is my bottom. second cancer. Because you had the prostate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But and they seeded that, and now you're yeah. And good. so now this, they're just sitting and waiting, and they say he, they say he has one guy, he's been seeing for uh, thirty years or something like that, with this same thing, and he's never shown symptoms. So yeah. And he says, it, and then I said, what happens if I show symptoms? He says, used to be I had to go in for radiation, you had to go in for like you know uh, what do they call it that where they put poison in your veins and stuff, you know. He said, Ooh. now it's just a little pill that you take once a day and it doesn't even affect you. It's, he said, but it, it. It, 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 it lowers all the stuff in the leukemia. So it's very easy to take care of. Good, so, good, good. See, so that's what said, you want. I, I you just don't I, want to feel crappy. Keep you know, me from feeling I, crappy and I'm, I'm 84 I'm years old to get this kind of leukemia. Hey, okay, I'll, I'll go. I'll go with it. You know. Yeah, yeah. And by the and way, I, I've had it for a year, because you got to remember this other test was done a year ago. Oh yeah, and you're still and my, doing fine. And my condition has not changed at all. You know. Yeah. See, and it's non-symptomatic. I don't right. mind those non-symptomatic things. It's just when you hurt. Yeah. I am not a fan of hurt. And that's what I, that's what I go to the doctor for. Make the hurt and go away. Make the hurt and go away. Well, here I'll show you this. This is wonderful. I bruise when they take uh, when they take blood. Look at uh -huh. that. Wow, that's a that is a woozy. Um, man, it looks like you got punched in a bar fight. Yeah. Well, right. what, do you take uh, any of those like cumin or anything that'll make you bruise easily? No. No, I no. just always when they give me the shot, I, I sometimes wind up with a minor bruise or a huge one. Wow, that's mm -hmm. interesting that something just like a needle prick would do that. Well, but, I think this, they put it in a little deeper and it's, you know, the changing uh, tubes and stuff. Because they took about five tubes of blood out of me. Woo, yeah. it must be valuable. And then I go the into page. the hospital, this is the best part. They got this thing called my chart. Which they my have, chart. a lot of hospitals have it. It's called My Chart. And you, you sign on it's to My Chart, you go over there and you can see when your appointments are and so on and so forth. Yeah, and there's an area important. called Tests. And they give you the results of all your tests. 
five minutes after I gave this blood, my watch goes off. You have some messages on your my chart. They were starting to post all the blood stuff, and today the last one came in, I think. And well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, little but they, oh, they all kept they, they came all came in within a day or so. Most of them. That's yeah, an efficient lab yeah, will do but, that for you. Uh, anyway, so but, that's my. I want to thank you for praying for me. Well, I want to thank for uh, for you being fine. Yeah, essential. You, you didn't fine. have to speak in tongues to be that efficient, did you? Um, I didn't have to. wasn't required. It's yeah. not like you go and sit to say a prayer. <laughs> it is, where's your paper? Come on. Are you willing to speak in tongues? And but yeah. it's uh, yeah, it's effective. I just do prayer. It's been a part of my life since I was an infant, and so it just it's it's kind of meditative. And it just makes me feel better about life. Yeah. And it makes me feel better about people and my relationship to them. Well, listen, so, dear, I want to wish you a pleasant journey. Thank you. Have a nice and, trip. Okay. And we will uh, we will uh, see you when you get back. Uh, okay. However, in the intervening weeks, there will be videos of you because we put a lot of them in a, in a, in a vault. And we okay. release them once a week. So we'll see you next week here, but we'll see you when you get back. Ladies and gentlemen, that there is Laurie Thompson. Bye, Laurie. Bon voyage. Bye, babe. <laughs> now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, thank you very much, Laurie, and have a good vacation. Have a good trip. We well, shall be back on it again next week. We What we did is we... <laughs> Well, the last couple of weeks, we've been taking uh, doing interviews with her for oh, like three last week and two today, and so now we have enough to take care of her while she's on vacation in uh, in in Europe. I I I'm I'm slowly waiting for that to happen to me, but you know, there's only one person waiting uh, in our uh, waiting room here, and uh, I you know I. I, 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 yeah, I, I, he's one of the better ones, so I, I don't care. Uh, so let's uh, let's talk to, uh, let's see here, Charlie Wallace is uh, trying to come on. Oh, I've got to turn off that. Oh, boy, I got to, I got to, hold on a second uh, there. Uh, I forgot to get rid of Lori here. <laughs> okay, and oh, okay, it's gone now. All righty. Uh, and uh, we say hello to Charlie Wallace. Hi, Charlie. Just you and me. Huh? Are you there? I can't hear you. I don't hear you. I keep forgetting oh. that it comes up muted whenever I call. Oh, I see. Okay. It comes up muted. Yeah, um, so I have to unmute myself. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. And hi to uh, Tom Yamaguchi. Good to see hey, you Tom. here, Tom. Nice to see hi. you. As always, um, I have a actually have a, a reason for being here. Yeah, I thought you'd like a visit from the crypt keeper. Crypt keeper? You called me the crypt keeper. The crypt keeper. The, oh, because you you always talk about people who died. Yeah, those are the people who died died. I uh, I had quite a few people die on me this week. Yeah, uh, that's uh, why I called. Yeah, for, first of all, a um, uh, guy I knew quite well through Shecky and uh, was, uh, was a guy I could say, you know, I'm, I, I, last time I saw him was at the Shecky Memorial. And that was, um, um, what's his name? Uh, the director of the Letterman Show. Oh, God, my yeah, mind's I'd just... Yeah, let, uh, let me pull my... Uh, J uh, Jerry RC. Foley. Jerry Foley. Jerry Foley, yeah. yeah. And Jerry died, I believe, on the same day this year that Shecky died on last year. Uh, the 10th? Yes. Okay. It was a skiing accident, according to Wikipedia. Yeah. Yeah. We, I don't know. that A lot of places didn't say what it was exactly. I began to think he oh, was a Wikipedia member. Wikipedia says it was a skiing accident. Oh, okay. I was, beginning, <laughs> I was beginning to think they were a member of the royal family, and, you know, they weren't going to reveal it. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah. And then, uh, what, what, Brian? No YouTube tonight? Mm -hmm. What? Oh, no YouTube? What? Yeah, you scared the hell out of us. 
Well, what There's no YouTube lie? tonight. I text you, Marjorie, everyone, saying what's going on. Is Alex okay? YouTube, I saw it on YouTube. YouTube's on right now. No. I'm getting, I'm getting, getting it here. here. Somebody also posted on your Facebook, said no show tonight. I don't see it. Well, well I, I didn't I, get that memo. I <laughs> I'm looking over here right now at YouTube, and there it is. Then yeah. somebody should go on their thingy, on their thing, because it's not here. Hey, you're not here. It's not coming over. Yeah, well, Somebody that, else posted on your Facebook page maybe, too. No show tonight, and I said, up. I guess not because I don't see it on here. No, it's, it's there. Wait maybe a minute. Hold on. showing up on your iPhone because I was watching it on my PC uh, on YouTube. Yeah. Well, let me see here, I, and it says live here. I have it. It's hmm. live everywhere that I should be getting it. Okay. Okay. So I mean, I don't know why it wouldn't. If I didn't have it on for the first. Uh, a couple of minutes during the beginning of the show where there were, uh, you know, we run all those spots and everything. And then I realized I hadn't started it, so I started it. So maybe what you're doing is you're looking at something that's just going back to the very beginning and looking for it. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm on live, but it doesn't show you on well, here. For well, me. We, we have, we, I, I, you, you're getting it, right? Um, hmm. Right, uh, Charlie? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I just went over and looked. It's still on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Yeah, it's bizarre. It's not coming over here for, at all. Well, you have a broken YouTube. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Charlie. Um, excuse me. Um, <laughs> or Char Charlie. <laughs> God, I'm I'm out of it tonight. Um, and Kilroy. Kilroy in the bottom there. Yeah, we had Kilroy over here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we can barely see um, Jeffrey. Uh, but then again, he can't hear me because he hasn't connected his audio yet. But when it, once he connects his audio yet, the next, that's a whole different kind of <laughs> thing. Hello, Char uh, are you there, Jeff? I am. Well, let's see your whole face. There we go. Okay. We go. All right. Oh, hmm. oh, that makes me feel so yeah, much better. Yeah, put some lights on. Yeah. Um, I'll put some lights on. Oh, okay. No. Uh, anyway. Uh, anyway, Charlie, so, the, uh, but then there was one other person that died. Yeah. Uh, you know who I'm talking about, uh, Tom? Who? Mal Malky McCourt. That's correct. My old friend and pal from WMCA. And, uh, uh, and you had him on uh, your serious program. That's yes, how I, I found yes, out. Yes, you I know. Did. And I had, actually, I think I called and actually was able to talk to him on, on the air. And I had lunch with him and, uh, and another friend of mine a couple of years ago, about 10 years ago. I meant to call him. I noticed I have his phone number in my, in my uh, you know, my what do you call it, my uh, um, address book. And um, I never I got around to calling him, and I feel bad about it now. But Malachy, um, in case people don't know who, do anybody here know who Malachy McCord is? Anybody know the book Angela's Ashes? That was a book about this Irish family in yeah. Ireland. They made his a movie. His brother Frank wrote that. His brother Frank wrote it. And uh, mm -hmm. a big part of that story is Malachy, who's like the, you know, the troublemaking Irish kid, you know. <laughs> and um, uh, I got to know Malachy very well. I mean, very well. Uh, because we shared the same politics together and we were on a talk station. So we felt a certain camaraderie that nobody felt with anybody else at the station. And mm -hmm. and it was terrific. And I lost him this week, uh, yeah. t too. There was somebody else that went as well. Any, yeah, Crip Keeper, you got any more names of people who died? died? Well, David mm -hmm. Nixner died. He, uh, he was a really important uh, gay rights activists especially mm -hmm. uh, in the he was uh, actually he was bill clinton's first uh really advisor on lgbtq issues and tried to try to get uh, uh you know people in the service to be able to serve openly it was and actually had clinton run on that and then when clinton got got in uh they he did a they called don't, don't ask don't tell and annoyed David Mixter so much that he just left. You know, he just 
you know, forget it. Yeah, but don't, don't uh, you they were strange yeah. for a number of years, but they finally got back together. But yeah, Bixter was a really important uh, gay rights activist. And, you know, uh, I've talked before about my friends, Quaker friends, who uh, did a, a documentary on uh, the uh, anti any uh, Vietnam uh, war protests in 1969, the Vietnam moratorium. Yeah. yeah. And there are lots of interviews. David Mixter is one of the people in the, in, in the, that they interviewed because he was a big anti-war activist before becoming a gay activist. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, I, I, it, it sounds like he was very principled. But when you say don't ask, don't tell, you got to remember that was being offered up at a time when nothing had been yeah. offered up, you know. So that was better than nothing. You know, mm -hmm. just let people serve in the service and don't ask them if they're gay. It doesn't matter if they're gay. Uh, I agree with him. That would be nicer if it was just you could say you were openly gay and not have any problems. But, you know, it wasn't the time yet. But I think Clinton did a lot. And mm -hmm. I think we got to give him credit for that, you know? Yeah. Um, well, then there was also the Defense of Marriage Act. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, these things these things kind of change, you know, over time. I'm sure the opinions that uh, Clinton held, uh, you know, 15, 20 years ago, he doesn't hold today. You know, so uh, uh, you got to, you know. T t well, he was dealing he was dealing with the, re with the Republicans. I I'm sorry. I, yeah, but he was dealing with Republicans. So he had. He had to, to make a lot of compromises and backtrack on a lot of oh, stuff. Oh, well, you too. deal with those Republicans, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> anyway. Uh, yes, uh, Alan. So, I'm sorry I missed the first eight minutes, but um, did you talk about your medical exam Monday? No. I talked <clears> about <throat> it with Lori, but if you missed it, too bad. I missed it. I was on was yeah, Zoom well, with my psychiatrist. You were what? on Zoom with my psychiatrist for my anxiety. Mm. In, in Kaiser, they use psychologists to help people out, but they use psychiatrists for medication management. And the, she said it for 7.30 and she was late and uh, we talked and everything's working mm. good. And, well, so you don't know whether I'm gonna live or die. It's basically. Yeah. What, uh, no, I do know if you're gonna live or die. I know that everybody on the show is gonna die. When, who knows? You know. Well, that's I, certainly I, I, depressing. I, I thought I was going to live forever. Hopefully, you will. <laughs> no, uh, I, uh, I, you know, I got had this appointment over at uh, Mount Sinai, which I was dreading. You know, because I'm one of these people that goes online and looks at all the the medical stuff, and I pretty much figured I was going to hear the worst. You know that I had diseases you never even heard of, okay? Uh, because I had all the signs of it and so on. So I, uh, I went to this doctor and I brought with him that whole, you know, I, I got that whole wor blood workup from last year with the doctor who never got a hold of me and told me how it turned out. So last week I got it and I printed the whole thing up for him. And I went and saw this doctor. First of all, drew blood. Okay, they they you know, they're like Dracula. They the first thing they want to do is they can't put their fangs in your neck. They have to use a needle, and then no matter how well this person does, this is the kind of thing that happens to me. Oh God! Right, mm -hmm. but they, they had to do. Um, I think there were five or six vials of blood they had to get out of me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, uh, but that that's what happens to me. So we'll see over the weeks how long it takes to go away. But yep. I had, I had I one on my feeling. hand here that took about two weeks. You I know, know the yeah. feeling. Well, Lori talked under the skin, moving yeah. under the skin. Yeah, yeah. It'll reabsorb. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Lori Thompson is praying for you, so that's mm -hmm. the good news. Well, she she prayed for me, and it it worked. Well, what happened was, I then went and saw the doctor. First, I meet up with his assistant. I think they call him practitioners or PTs or something, physician uh, assistant PAs, that's what they call them. And she asked me all these questions, how do you feel about this, and is your blood, are you having any coughs, and any band, you know, are you getting any bruising? Well, I said, not until now, you know. <laughs> uh, 
and and asked me a whole bunch of questions and then she felt my neck couldn't feel anything any lymph nodes that were enlarged and I had this thing in this report you know from a year ago it turns out I have what's called chronic lymphatic um, uh, leukemia or it says there the, the, the this flow test said that's what it would be and the, the doctor comes in and she well she takes that out to him the whole thing and uh, he comes in and he comes in very nice guy I mean you know I, I liked him immediately uh, warm caring decent and uh, he said to me, um, he said, you know, you've got a bunch of things. You've got low, low, uh, uh, some low platelets. You know, you've got this. This is only on the edge. It's not really over. You know how when they tell you whether it's how it is on the spectrum, it goes high. If it's just a little bit over. And he said, no, these numbers are not anything to worry about. He said, if you haven't had any symptoms, we're not going to treat you. He said, you just come in every six months or so on, and we'll, we'll give you some blood tests and see that you're okay and uh, send you on your merry way. And he said, I said, what happens if the day comes that I need to, you know, have treatment? He said, well, they used to treat it with, uh, you know, uh, what's the thing they give you? The, uh, the Chemotherapy. Chemotherapy. Uh, um, and uh, we could uh, there were a whole bunch of different things he said they used to do he said it's all been replaced by one little pill you take once a day he said and that pill will make it go it will make it you know lessen and we'll, uh, it doesn't cure it nothing will cure this but he said this you know basically what everybody else I, I've read says this is something you're going to die with not from so Good. I I have leukemia now, and and uh, uh, that's the second cancer I've had. Let's see what the next one is going to be. But this is the one that's not particularly bothersome, and uh, it's manageable. And so uh, uh, that's that's how it turned out. But man, well, I'm glad that it was good news. Well, yep. I was a little panicked. Okay, and no I was more than a little panicked. Yep. Yeah, well, I wasn't panicked. If you may remember, I wasn't panicked at all about the prostate cancer, no, mainly yeah. because I knew what it. I went to the doctor; he did the biopsy. I knew what it was immediately. Right. Okay, and and so therefore we were able to take care of it, and and uh, you know, whereas right. with this, I'm waiting some, for some time, and I did. We don't know, and I was a year. This test, this other test came out a year ago, so you got to imagine that if I went the whole year and nothing changed. Between then and now, with the blood test, uh, I'm pretty well. Don't have. I'm asymptomatic, so that's that's <laughs> the nature of it, and I'm happy about that. And uh, you won't hear from me about my health for another at least two or three days. So uh, you know, but it, it, it's uh, it gets a little scary, you know, because I'm I'm 84, right? And you kind of go, well, what is it exactly that's going to get me? You know, like today I've had a few stomach aches and I went, okay, that's it. That's the one that's going to get me. Answer, yeah. Yeah. Stomach you cancer. need to get anti-psychiatry drugs, anti-anxiety anti drugs. Oh, I have those. <clears throat> because I have anxiety and when they do a medical test and they don't get results quickly, my anxiety goes up and I think the worst. And usually it's nothing. Well, imagine not hearing from your doctor who does a whole battery of tests on you and not hearing anything from him ever. I think I'd be a more I think I'd be more aggressive than you might have been. And yeah. even though I didn't hear from him, I would contact him. I still may and just say, What the hell were you doing? Not you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. you know. But the thing is that uh um it was uh you know, I mean, I, I just, he just never got back to me on that. And, and I just felt that that was, I said to the doctor, I said, you know, I never heard back from this guy. And he said, well, where did you go? And I told him the place I went to it. I'm going to say the name of it, the Cancer and Blood Specialists. They have like 20 different places all over the New York area. And he said, oh, them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> He said, you know what the problem was? He said, the doctors there used to be good. But they're not anymore because the company was taken over by a corporation. 
Oh, I thought you were going to say the doctors were veterinarians. No, no, they were, they were taken over by a corporation. He said a lot of those doctors yeah. were top notch. He said, but then the corporation comes along and they tell them, you know, we need more billable hours out of you and blah, 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 blah. And the whole na nature of the place changes. You know, it doesn't mm. have the same feel. And uh, so, um, you know, he, he said, uh, and I said, but if you saw on page five that I had this thing, this leukemia, wouldn't you call me? He said, I'd call you if there was nothing, just to tell you everything's okay. He said, I said, he never did. And I said, you know, that's, that's irresponsible. And he agreed with me, you know. So, I mean, uh, so I have to go back another, what, I'm, since my platelets are low, he wants me to come back in eight weeks and test the platelets again. You know, if worse comes to worse, they just give you like some prednisone or something like that. How low are your platelets? Uh, I, this time it was like uh, 89, but it had been a couple of weeks ago 116. Okay. You know, and yeah, he's one four, 140 to 400 is normal. No, 150 but, to. Okay, well, with yeah. different places, different numbers, but but. When I was getting them, my platelets were like between 100 and 130. And my new doctor, which I've had now for four years, said, let's try a different type of platelet test. And the number came up to 180. And I said, well, what was going on? Well, there's a, something in your blood that won't allow the standardized test to work. So next time you get it, you might bring this up to the doctor. Uh, I'm, I'm sure he. I'm sure he knows of that possibility. But also, uh, your platelets are higher than fifty thousand. You're fine. Oh, you know, he said. He said to me. He said, even though they're low, he said yeah. they're not low enough that I tell you. I, if you tomorrow you had to have an operation, I tell you go have it. You know, it, sure. it, it wouldn't affect you. Platelets, gonna, in yeah. case people here don't know are an element in your blood that clots your blood. So if you don't, if you have low platelets and then you go in to have an operation, you just bleed on the floor of this, you yeah. know, of the operating that's room. That's correct, so, yeah. Anyway. But, but that's, usually it's like under 40,000 or something yeah. like that before they get concerned. So are you all happy that I'm not gonna die yet? Yeah. Well, yes. yes. You'll Thanks. outlive all of us. <laughs> I doubt that. Oh, uh, we're, we're hoping you got our last name spelled right in your will. Yeah, I do. I do. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sure. Anyway, you know. So, but you know what happens is, all these people around you start dying, and you go, "This is ridiculous," you know. And then I stop to think about, it and I go, "Yeah, but they're that old, and I'm eighty-four." So at this age, I'm going to see a lot of people I know die, you know? Yep. So all yep. you guys better stay in good health, okay? That's all I'm saying. I mean, you know who's going to outlive us all? Jeff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? The ultimate chemistry. Well, all he has to do is plug himself into the wall, and he's okay, you know? <laughs> And turn a browser on. Yeah. That's right. So, Unbelievable. you know. Uh, gee, not a lot of people are watching us right now. I don't know why. Could be. Are you still having trouble getting me on YouTube, uh, Brian? Huh? You're muted, Brian. Wait a minute. Still muted, He's Brian. He's still muted. What hmm. is that? He's talking on the phone, I guess. Oh, I guess. You don't say. <laughs> no, nope, he didn't say. Right. Yeah. Nope. So we're anyway. still on YouTube, huh? We're still on YouTube. See, I, I, yeah, you're on YouTube. Well, yeah. I know I am. I'm looking at myself on YouTube right here. So you know, well, that's a shock. Yeah. Um. So anyway, how's el everything else, Tom? Anything been happening that you know? Well, getting back to to, to prayer. Um. Actually, I have a a Zoom meeting every morning, engaged in prayer. Her friend who was involved in a serious motorcycle crash in uh, Martinez wow. last late last August, and um, 
he was taken to John Muir Hospital and put in a medically induced coma for several days and then slowly got him out. And he's been slowly re in recovery. He went from uh, to Kaiser in Oakland and Kaiser up in uh, Vallejo for, uh, for, for rehab. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we go on every morning and, uh, and have a, what we call a prayer circle. And it's a half hour every morning. And it's amazing how to, to, to witness his recovery. And he, is, he, is he in the prayer circle? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's been able, after like maybe two or three weeks after it started, he actually was able, because he was back home then. He has a, he lives in El Cerrito. He was back home and he actually was has been able to join us and he's been with us every morning so I we can actually see him in recovery. He had a situation where I think it was his right eye, either his left eye or right mm -hmm. eye. Yeah. So I guess it's his right eye, it was backwards. But uh, it was like closed. You know, he couldn't open it. Yeah. For for a number of weeks and mm -hmm. now he's able to open it. So he's just sort of like but he was really in, in, in bad know, shape, and, and, and we were, I was afraid, we, many of us were afraid we were really going to lose him, but, but, uh, but well, you he, know, he, you know me, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm basically an atheist, all right, uh, and yet, I say a prayer every night. Yeah. Now, why do I say a prayer? Hey, Alex, you're an atheist, and you say a prayer. Well, it has nothing to do with atheism or theism. Uh, prayer is something which I think is, how can I put it? It's self-affirming. Mm -hmm. In other words, if, if you, I, to begin with, I very seldom pray for myself. I mm -hmm. pray for other people. But if I pray for, if you pray, pray, even pray for yourself, it's, 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 it's self-affirming, you know, and it puts you in a mood uh, to be curative and becomes curative. So I believe in, in prayer uh, if for no other reason but that it puts a vibe out into the universe, you know, but it has nothing to do with God. Mm -hmm. I, you know. I do that with sending coffee to people. Really? <laughs> so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's good for me because I feel good giving, and it's good for them. They feel good. Well, you're always me. sending me stuff, and I, I, I wonder why, and I suddenly realize you probably like doing it. And I actually like you. Yeah. Well, I mean, you sent me some coffee recently. You sent me some of that stew. What is it? Um, and the one thing you didn't want was, yeah, the, the Tim Hortons. The one thing you didn't want was the cane. Ah, I don't need it. And then for three programs in a row, you said, I got to thank Alan for the cane. It really came in. Well, when I, when I fell and I, uh, this leg was really <laughs> trashed, uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I thank God for that. Well, not God, but you. Well, maybe the same thing. I, uh, for sending me the cane. Same guy. You know, it, uh, it helped me get around, it's at least to the doctor where I got my shots in the knee. It's like it's like when Tony got cancer. Instead of sending a a uh, a car to get well card, which everybody reads and then throws away, I sent him a get well teddy bear, you know, <laughs> which says get well on this little teddy bear, and uh, he still got it. We were talking on the phone today. He's Tony, did you check? Did you check for the camera? I told you to check the eye for the camera. What's the uh, teddy bear? Oh, <laughs> oh, that's probably why it makes noise at night. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, okay, hey, just, just let everybody know YouTube is okay. Oh, really? Okay. That's why the teddy bear's eyes moving when I'm sitting there playing. I don't know. I showed like Alex Bennett mix, and then you have to click on that, and there's like 108, 114 episodes. But I don't know why it made me go that way. Usually it pops right up because I subscribe all the time. Hmm. By the way, speaking of that, um, I don't know why I got into a fervor of doing work on my uh, Roku channel, and if you go there, there's an it's area. It's down. I tried to go to it, Alex. It's not down. I tried <laughs> to go to it on my Roku just now. I couldn't get the show. Is it? It's not available. Your show right now. That's why I came downstairs. I couldn't get to it. Hold on a second. Yeah, because I just was on the app on my Roku. I was watching. I was reading. So I said, "Let me go to the cabinet," and I went and would load to the live show. So I went to my phone and I saw you were on because you were talking about your platelets. Platelets? Yeah, for your leukemia. You, they were like yeah, 80 something. Platelets. I couldn't get you on the, on the TV because I went to my, I love my Roku. So let me go to the thing, see what's cooking. And I said, oh, it's not loading in the live show. 
come on. I think, it's very I, unavailable, it said. I think Phil and Tony learned English in the same place. <laughs> same thing. Yeah, we both raised our hand. I moved to the back. <laughs> Let's right. see here. Am I am I uh, am I going out on that? I have to keep checking this. No, we're going out live. Yeah. No, we're. Come on, dude. I, I this thing will not uh, turn on my. Uh, come on. Hold on a second. I got to turn on the TV. Uh, 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 uh. Now look, we just started talking. Damn you. See, you've done, Tony. You've distracted. Sorry. How's it going out there, Tom, in San Francisco? Oh, nice oh, it's warming up. Wow. It's after all that rain. We're, we we had some really nice, warm, sunny weather today. Yes, we did, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We both, okay. we both live in the well, Brian, now, too, lives in the Bay Area. Here. Yeah. yeah. Joe McLaren did it. Is it on? There it is. Okay. Well, now, Tom, do you think Trump has a chance? I'm getting worried here. Well, of course he has a chance. I know that's just not that's good. Why, that's why I'm working as hard as I can for oh, Joe. Man, I'm that's worried. also why he's in a prayer group every morning. I don't blame. Maybe I should come. If yeah, I was out there, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's what we should be doing. Praying for 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 Joe Biden. But he seems I'm hoping to Trump okay takes a heart attack. attack. He <laughs> seems to be doing okay. But yeah, but you know, uh, I'll tell you, Trump. Uh, if if he can if he can steal election he will that's for sure. That's what my yeah. brother's afraid of Tom. He's afraid that I don't even I, I don't I don't even know how they're voting for this guy still. It is amazing, isn't it? It's it's like people have amnesia. They can't while, remember. While, while Alex is on something else, Tom, a friend of mine was a, a gay psychiatrist for mm -hmm. the VA here in the Bay Area, and he worked for Bill Clinton when he was governor of Arkansas. And oh. Bill, Clinton, Bill Clinton called him back to New York while he was president and asked him to testify uh, as a psychiatrist why gays should not be in the military. And he did just the opposite in court that Clinton wanted. It made front page news in the Chronicle. Oh, well, wait a minute. He had, Clinton had him testify why gays should not be in the military? That's right, except for he was gay and a psychiatrist here in the Bay Area. Well, that doesn't sound <laughs> like something Clinton no, would do. Well, no, not, not, yeah, yeah, Clinton. Sorry, Clinton. So Yeah, I, you mean, so, so because, gay, because Clinton was trying to allow gay people to serve in the military. Yeah, yeah I, I don't I don't remember the exact story, but all I know is my friend Don't ask, don't tell, wasn't it? Went, went, yeah, was, well, we were, was a, we're He was a gay psychiatrist for the VA and he Clinton called them and asked him to testify a certain way. And they'd been friends since Arkansas and uh he testified in a different way and said, I see no reason why gay shouldn't should be uh have to say and uh they should be allowed in the military. They had they had in this in in the courtroom they had five or six military officers that they were trying to kick out and he said no they're they're perfectly fine. Yeah, I, I I'm I'm sort of confused because because that doesn't sound like what Clinton a position Clinton was taking because he was actually public when he was running for office he was taking the act, actually the opposite he wanted. He uh, wanted to allow I could, I could have the story the wrong. I could go get the paper. Yeah, me. I think you got your story wrong. <laughs> that that's, that's not unusual. Un that's that's Tom, not unusual. It would be the first time. <laughs> See, now somebody says to me, oh, that isn't working. So now I'm trying to work, make it work, and my Roku uh, won't get the signal from my remote. <sighs> it's, it's, this is not. Oh. It's Tony's fault. Sorry, I, I tried to go to Roku. It's, it's, you like, broke it, Tony. <laughs> you broke yeah, down you know, just your broke brain. I hit it on my couch. I was sitting there like, hey, what's going on here? Yeah, well, Tom, if your brain is uh, Trump not right. to win, I want to join into that prayer group. Well, <laughs> I got to come out and buy a coffee and don't go. Anyway, what I wanted to say to people was is <laughs> that I have added about 30 new videos to the GabNet channel. And I've got a lot of old stuff from Live 105 in San Francisco mm. and the Quake, and uh, I think you'd uh, you'd kind of like it, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you have any been videos over there of you and Margie yeah. on uh, making out on a park bench or anything, no. Although I'm going to add those videos too. But uh, uh, let me see here. The live didn't work for you, huh? Yeah, before I didn't work the live. It's uh, temporary, unavailable. 
No, I hit it and it, uh, it, no, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, maybe yeah, we you, just now you just kind of set my made my show come to a grinding halt. Yeah, that's because true. you couldn't <laughs> get it. You know, hey everybody, it's all working. What? 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 Thanks, Tony. I'm too. I'm <laughs> sorry. Glad, it wasn't I, I'm glad you diverted everybody from my YouTube bluff. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy! Well, I'll tell you though, you guys were talking on your own, and uh, you were holding the show down just fine. Mm -hmm. Maybe the best thing I should do is just start the show and then uh, take myself <laughs> off break. and let you keep people keep going. You know? Please uh, no, please no. <laughs> yeah. Um, Why you're um, muted half the time? <clears throat> what? What do you mean I'm muted half the time? No, Brian is. He's Brian. like, please no, please nobody's. Lately, the past couple of weeks, he likes to mute himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that way we won't get... Uh... Did you read those lips? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you wanted to take me to oh. dinner. Thank you. <laughs> oh, hey. Look who's there. Hey. Bye, Adrian. She just <laughs> came in here and said, language, language. Did she oh, you actually wrong? said it out loud. Oh. I thought you just yeah, I said it out loud. Oh, really? I, I thought you were just moving your mouth and saying it. That's what I thought, too. So I wouldn't get, you know, demonetized. <laughs> well, you didn't. I did. You did. I, I don't care whether I get demonetized anymore. Ooh, demonetized I'm gonna be, from her. I'm going to be demonetized. What do you think? What do you think about the whole TikTok thing? I don't know what to believe anymore. Uh, Who, yeah. me? Yeah, I mean, anybody. I mean, Except I just think today this the Congress... Voted uh, to uh, make uh, um, uh, TikTok have to sell uh, the co the company there the the company that ha owns them has to sell it and somebody else has to buy it otherwise they're going to take TikTok off I guess in the United States yeah in the United States but only the House voted for it I know I, I only the House voted for it'll it it'll stop in the Senate but you know I'm sorry. But these guys don't know technology, and they don't understand it, you know? Oh. And the fact is, they're going after TikTok. You ready for this? They're going after TikTok because they're owned by, they think, they claim they're not any longer, but they claim they're owned by a Chinese company, okay? So and we don't want to do business with China. They're no, not taking, they're not, China they didn't vote to take Ancestry.com off. Because Ancestry.com sends all your information to a Chinese organization. Really? Yes. You should, really we should be talking to Jeff about this. I think he's on the board of directors for TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I like Chinese food. They know that. No, they but I just, I, I, somehow I just think it's ridiculous. I mean, and also there are a lot of people in America who make a living off of TikTok. Oh yeah, you know they yeah. rely on TikTok for their their livelihood. They claim there's 190 yeah, so where, million. Yeah, where's their stance on everything coming from foreign countries? Hmm. All this, what's their stance on all, anything we buy from a foreign country? Right? Yeah. I mean, we can say stop. No, you can't. We should buy American. How many people have an iPhone? <laughs> it's made what? in China. Well, you yeah. know, I just don't think uh, I'm not that worried about. You know, I'm not that worried about the Chinese getting a lot of data information from Americans because they use TikTok. Right. I don't yeah. buy into it, really. You I... know, it's not like, you know, they could go and go to bed. You know what they did? Uh, somebody mm. hacked uh, Roku. 15,000 names I'm were, sure. you know, were gotten And you're one hack. of that 15,000. That's why you can't get off. I yeah. don't care. Oh, my. It's like Larry Bubbles Brown says, you want to steal my identity? Great, then you'll have no life. Right, I love that. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> if they get mine, forget about it. They'll go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it, 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 uh, it, it's just, I don't know. I mean, I just think that they should lay off TikTok. You know, there are enough people there who are on TikTok. I think they have 150 million Americans. 190 is what I heard. Wow, heard 190. I, I heard 150, but you know, your, your, mileage, <laughs> your mileage may vary. What'd you say? Stupid people take it for the news, you know? 
Oh yeah. Oh. Tony, be yeah. nice, Tony. Don't say anything. Tony. Don't stupid but, people. You know, people take it for the news, and they and they, you know, especially with AI coming. Now, when you yeah, look on your AI. screen and you see somebody <laughs> that looks like that looks like uh, Biden and talks like Biden and sounds like yeah, Biden, like he that. starts seeing something wrong. You know, it's like. Do we regulate it? Well, but on the other hand, no, uh, if you want uh, the same situation where you say, hey, you know, you're you're not getting the news, try MSNBC, try Fox, uh, yeah. try CNN. Exactly. You I like know, those. you're not I getting mean, the news all there either. They're all liars. Yeah. And and yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I, I just don't I, I just don't understand why, except for the fact that these assholes, mm. these old fucks over it in congress don't understand technology they're not hip to it how many of those people yeah. who voted against tiktok is even have even gone to tiktok sure. and, and you have on facebook you have reels right or instagram you have reels and you have those type of things that are exactly the same as tiktok yeah but they're they're generated here in the united states and you know Ooh. they don't use our data do they Oh, yeah. <laughs> Every time I search it, Amazon it always pops up. Like, if I'm looking for old movies, you might, they see what you're looking at. I do recipes and they know, like, you've been looking at things. Like, oh, yeah. I can find, that I can be looking at something online mm -hmm. that has nothing to do with YouTube. And then I can go to YouTube and for some odd reason, the yeah. thing I was looking up yeah. that I, that's that, wild. Yeah, if exactly. you go, if you go into your phone right now and Google, Trips to Hawaii, wanted, wanted, right? Yeah. Mm, and yeah. go on to to something like Expedia and look at a couple. I guarantee you, you go back to your Facebook and you'll start seeing Hawaii vacations. Pop I, that's up. Yeah, that's mine. About they're tracking you. Yeah, they're tracking you. Yeah, well, and that's that's what you know. All data mining. Hmm. Well, I find that more more problematical. Absolutely. Because, you know, yeah. but I mean, I don't. Uh, I don't. Uh, to begin with, what do I watch on 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 TikTok? Kitties, Nothing. kitties doing funny things. Oh, you like the cats? Oh, no, like, you know what I like now? I, I like the monkeys, monkeys and raccoons. You know they train oh, those really? raccoons and they're like little cute with little hands. Really? Well, uh, the thing was that uh, you know Larry Bubbles Brown had high speed internet, and he got it for free for a month. And after a month, he said, "I don't want it." And I said, "Why?" He said, I found it a complete waste of time. He said, I found myself at 3 o'clock in the morning riveted to my monitor watching a orangutan um, riding a uh, golf cart. I said, are you sure <laughs> that wasn't you. Trump? Uh, <laughs> I love the internet. Oh. You know, mm -hmm. but uh, it's, it's, it's just, I, I just, I just think that the, uh, these are a bunch of old farts who know nothing about technology. They know nothing about science, and they're making decisions on what kind of science can be used and not used. And I, I you know, hmm? it, it's funny you say that, Alex, because I remember the when uh, Janet Reno was going after Bill Gates for his uh, not putting Netscape, I believe, on his desktop. Like she knew absolutely nothing about software, but here's yet again Congress dragging him into court. And just dragging the company down where they don't even understand what they're talking about half the time. It's almost like when Zuckerberg got called up on uh, Congress. Remember, you had to go down there? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. it's what like. Were those, uh, yeah, what were they asking? Remember, they're asking like some really stupid ba yeah. basic yeah. questions. Yeah. That's the point I'm making. And what I'm saying is yeah, exactly. how many of these congressmen today who voted against TikTok have ever used TikTok? That's a good question. I bet you they don't even use it. Yeah, so they I mean, probably have no idea what it is. They think it's porn yeah. or Pornhub or something. I think that the whole fight about AI mm. uh, is a little bit uninformed when it comes to the science of it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I can tell when I'm watching AI Donald Trump that it's AI Donald Trump. Okay. There's just something that doesn't look 100% right, yeah. you know? He looks too intelligent. <laughs> yes. I, I don't know. I never, I never, I never My God, he's making too much sense. I never I thought I'd see Rocket. I never thought I'd see Rocket come like. back to Earth and land by themselves. Yeah. He put two yeah. sentences together. Oh, my God. <laughs> AI seems to mess up the hands, the fingers sometimes. It's odd. Yeah, you're right, Alex. It is strange when you're watching it. 
Yeah, you well, can I see mean, it's like composed. It's just there's something a little off, you know? Yeah, what about when you listen to it? When you listen to it, they're the very DC. close to how yeah, they Yeah, really. Yeah. Very yeah. close. Well, yeah. you, you, can do vo you can do voice replacement pretty well. That's you know? amazing, yeah. Which would be fine, because then yeah. I wouldn't have to even do the show. I could just uh, tell it, go do my show for me, you know? <laughs> you well, would, they, ha they had a... They had a Jerry Jones, you know, the owner of the Cowboys, and he said, "We're all in this year." And then oh, but yeah. I don't say anything, so maybe it maybe it wasn't him. <laughs> <laughs> well, all I'm saying is, you know, AI can be used for good too, you know, and and that's the thing they don't talk about. Oh, AI is going to the end They're of the world. They're using it in medicine now. Huh? Did you always look at the bad? They're using thing? it a lot in medicine. Are they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, it can be used for good. Yeah. Um, wait a minute. Kevin came online, and then he's not there. It's AI. <laughs> it's, AI. it's AI. It's AI, AI. yeah. It's really AI. Oh, it's AI, AI. Kevin. <laughs> yeah. You know what I did with AI? This is this scared me. I got mm. I had Photoshop, right? Mm. And um, sometimes, you know, you'd like to use the background in a picture, but you don't want the person who's in the picture. <laughs> now yeah. all I have to do is tell a, a Photoshop to AI by <laughs> here, take out this here, and I click on the me uh -huh. in the picture, and then I say, remove me. And it removes me and replaces me with a background that is perfect. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool. So you can actually, yeah, you can take yourself right out of it. That's nice. Well, a lot of times we used to do things where I wanted a background like that. A good <laughs> example was um, mm -hmm. last week they had this woman who gave the State of the Union a response. What was her name? Bozo the Clown. Bozo the Clown. <laughs> <laughs> God, this, woman could, this woman this woman did screw up on that yeah. green. Well, they did, uh, they did Scarlett Johansson doing her. Oh, but I noticed that the background was the same exact background that's right. that's right. that she yeah. had used yeah because it was the same pictures on the refrigerator and there was a picture on the wall same but picture. you don't need AI but to what happened that. was what they did is they probably took her and they just told in Photoshop and this would have taken forever mm -hmm. years ago and just said remove her and it removes her and now you've got the background yeah you know very simple so I'm thinking of getting that background and sending it to all. You see, I, with Tony, we could have <laughs> not had to go through the problem of removing Tony from all yeah, of his backgrounds of that horrible... My brother wishes paper, you would, Alex. That horrible <laughs> wallpaper. Yeah, I got the wallpaper saved if you want a piece. Did you save it? <laughs> uh, still saved. Would you send it to I'm me? Never, I, want, I want to frame it. I, I have an extra piece here. I'll send it to you. I got you. I'll never forget. I don't mean to change subjects, but Aren't when you, you said that, right? can't you just walk over there, Tony, and give it to him? No, he's in. He's in Harlem. I'm in Queens. I yeah, and I don't want him anywhere near <laughs> me. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll never leave. <laughs> he's not leaving. <laughs> Somebody may think he's under the influence of methamphetamine. As wired as he is. You know what was funny, Alex? My mother's apartment was empty, and we were getting ready to rent it. I walked by the room, and I stopped in that room, in the dining room. And I looked at the wallpaper, how it didn't match, and I just started laughing because I never actually noticed how bad it was <laughs> until you said that. Wait, uh, oh my God, it's terrible! My brother's like it's crap. He says it really is. She had no taste, mommy. I says I know. But let her think she did. It's even the same though. theory about how you really your own farts don't smell bad to you. <laughs> and so just it's the same like, theory uh, working at play there. Yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, no, I, you know, uh, and what was the other thing? Oh, yes. Um, um, Don Lemon, you know, Don Lemon is a, a, yes. a news anchor over at CNN who they fired. Oh, yeah. He lives in Harlem. He, he, he was good. He, he was okay, but that's not the point. So, what he did is he got, a, he got like a, a $25 million settlement out of CNN. Yeah, and now he was going to be able to go do his shows elsewhere. So he makes a deal to go over and do his shows at X, which is, of course, Elon Musk's company. Right. Uh, um, so he's getting ready to do it, and he wants for his first show, he manages to get Elon Musk to sit for really? an hour and a half interview. Wow. Only it wasn't only all nice and fuzzy. 
he asked him some tough questions. You know, why do you do this? Why do you do that? You know, it was very respectful, according to everybody who's heard it. But uh, as soon as the interview was over, um, Elon Musk said, I don't want him on X. <laughs> and they got rid of him. He, he probably got, used AI him. to come up with the question. Can you get, can huh? you get on a like that? But, I mean, he, yeah, he just... Uh, you know, so, I mean, this guy has no sense of humor about himself. No. no. You know, somebody's going to ask you tough questions. You fuck up. You don't do a good job answering them. So, you know, live with it. Well, but, that's that's the way the thing happened with Biden and Tucker Carlson. Well, well the point that Lemon made was Biden, is that, but, that uh, Putin. The, I'm gonna watch the, the point Le Lemon was making about this was is that um, uh, Musk has been saying he's been doing what he's doing over at X because he feels it should be a, a free, open space for people to yeah. say what they feel and to be honest about what they feel. Mm. And uh, he says, but then I ask him some tough questions. He doesn't like what I'm asking him, and he drops me from X. I don't even get my show on the air. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I, I appreciate what Musk is doing with, uh, with uh, SpaceX, I admire what he did with, uh, with uh, you know, a car you got to plug in. Uh, <laughs> but geez, you know, come on, you know, well, well get rid, get rid of that X and everything. Don't do that because it only, it only diminishes the good work you're doing. And he is doing I, good stuff scientifically. Yes, uh, Tom. I keep debating whether to delete my account or not. I mean, it's like. It, it, it all, like people say, well, it's toxic. It, it, not as much toxic. It's just I just I just cannot stand having going. You know, having taken perfectly good brand called Twitter. Yeah. You know, they had a great logo. Twitter. You know, the the the, the, the define what you're posting in a tweet and change it to X. I just, X is something I call the person I used to be married to. Why do you call that? It's like, it doesn't make any sense. You have to you pay know? it, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, he was going to clean it up. And I have a friend of mine that's got a, a site on X. And it, it's, it's purely him and his wife and his children. And all of a sudden, you're going through it and... Here's a little guy and little girl that look like they're 14 having sex in a sweet nude. <laughs> Complain seven times and then said, screw it. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on. I thought, he, I thought he was gonna, not going to let that kind of stuff on there. Well, apparently my friend says it's all over the place on, 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 uh, on Twitter still. And it ended up on his site. How he know he doesn't know. See, I agree. That's yeah, but I agree, you know, that if you're going to have a – a kind of what I call electronic Hyde Park, uh, right. and everybody can say what they want to say, that's a good idea. One thing but on say. the other hand, so. you've got to monitor some of the stuff that goes on that is not good for the public, that's okay, right. and is not uh, healthy for the for the uh, for kids and so on. Uh, so uh, you've got you got you got to take the good with the bad. You can have an open area for people to give their political opinions and things like that. But then you've also got to monitor those things that hurt people, and that's something that definitely hurts people. So, yep, definitely. You know, it, it, let me put it this way. He was the wrong person to be monitoring this whole system. I'm sure know? he's hired people to do it. But, yeah, you well, know. I mean, he should just go down to Texas and launch your rockets. Leave me alone. Okay. And your cars. Yeah, because you're doing a great job with those rockets. They're amazing. They're going to launch another one of the big super ones in the next couple of days. And if they get that thing up and running, that's all you wrote, man. We're on our way to Mars. You know? Uh, so. Are you going to go on the first mission if they offer it to you? I would be the first one to go, yes. But I don't think I'm going to live long enough. <laughs> ah, you're to doing to do a, a ramble podcast from Mars. Yeah, right. Well, they probably don't have good Wi Fi up there. Probably and, not. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Doesn't he have this uh, these little satellites that you can get Wi-Fi anywhere in the world? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Skynet or whatever it's called. I mean, you know, whatever it's what's called. Yeah. Was Skynet the thing in Terminator? Are they? Yeah, that was uh, in yeah. Terminator. Well, what, Star, his Starlink. 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 Skynet. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I just put him on Mars. Yeah. Yeah. 
But uh, do you? Uh, how do you feel about it, uh, Charlie? Because you're the, you're the science guy. You're kind of on a level with me. I mean, are you thrilled by what SpaceX is doing? Yes and no. I'm thrilled that they're able to do it, but I really don't want that in private hands. <laughs> right. Right. Give it to give it to this NASA. Yeah, but, but you like know him. you don't want it in private hands. But look how far they've advanced the art. I know, but all you can't do is say something wrong well, about wait, Elon Musk and. Yeah, your he's a nutcase. Yeah, he's a nutcase. But in private hands, this <laughs> the whole space thing has become cheaper to do. Has well, what if he becomes a whack job and starts turning? Yeah, really. Or or moving to Hollister. <laughs> <laughs> I'd kick him out. Yeah, Sorry, but I I I just uh, I think that um, it's kind of you know kind of sad in a way. That, that a guy who has been doing some things that are pretty good. See, I don't mind private industry doing it because NASA never was able to do it cheaply. You know, it was never... They're already able... complaining about the, the new uh, rocket that they may not go back up. What because do you mean? it costs too much. What, the new yeah. ones? The moon. Well, who, who, the moon, which yeah. One? The one that... Well, the beginning... The eBay with... rocket. Oh, the eBay <laughs> rocket. Oh, okay. No, but the thing is that um, uh, uh, NASA uh, has done a terrible job over the last couple of years of trying to do this in any economical way. And when they sent that rocket to the moon, do you know that the rockets they did to send up the, the capsule that went there yeah, they were, were the same ones. They were, they were yeah, refurbs. They were the old rockets they were using they were to send up the shuttle. Again. Yeah, yeah. Where, that's, where, that's my point, is that, that they were already complaining about how they're going to have to uh, refurb again, and that's even going to cost them more. I think SpaceX has sent something like uh, about 150 missions up, and, the, and 150 times those rockets, the, the second stages, have come right back to Earth without one single crash. Standing up. Yeah. Oh no, they, they've had a couple crashes. No, that in the beginning. Yeah. Since they, well, they yeah, but since they got crashes. the technology worked out, yeah. no problem, no problem. Am I right, Charlie? Yeah. Yeah. So. But it, NASA also brought back the shuttles most of the time. Brought back most the shuttles. Time. Yeah, but yeah, when was, when yeah. when they launched Except. the shuttle, they brought it back and reused it. It was able well, to well, land. No, but the like shuttle. That. No, the shuttle they brought back because. What they brought back was really an airplane, mm -hmm. you know. These are actual rockets that, that they it. bring I've down and reuse. It's pretty amazing to me that they can land standing up. And then they yep. they repaint them, refill them, put them back on the launch pad and use them again. One of them was on a ship in the ocean moving, and the ship was moving. Well, well no, they, well, they, they have a platform out in the ocean they can land right. on. They're right on, the tar right on target. There's a circle, and that rocket lands right in the middle of that circle. Why don't they put Trump in that circle and let him guide the rocket down? <laughs> Why does it always come to Trump? <laughs> Why don't you wait for your best shot when he really does something we can make a big joke about? I don't know. You said something about him earlier before me. You beat me to it. What did I say? I don't know. You don't know. Okay. Well, you know. So anyway, so uh, other than that, um, we're, uh, we're, I guess, in pretty good shape. We're we're on to our, our election now because it's, it's like a rerun, isn't it? I know. It's a, and a bad rerun at that, you know? I just, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Folks, we need, a, we need a bunch of new people running for president. We can't come up with anything better than this. It's amazing. Just a well, I think we've come up with something really good with with with, with Biden. I I really I'm really impressed with how all he's doing right now. Well, if people yeah, I, people yeah. can't see the difference between him and, and Trump. We are, really are screwed. Well, if America wants that's, to reelect Trump, that's what they deserve. Okay, I'm yeah. I'm sorry the rest of us have to suffer, but th that's what this country deserves. And if it's yeah. the end of our of our country as we know it, uh, so be it. Uh, this has been a democracy that failed. All right? And uh, if anybody's going to kill democracy, Americans are going to do it themselves. The Russians don't have to work at it. Uh, anyway, hey, thanks, Charlie. Appreciate it. As always, my friend Tom, always a pleasure to have you here because it brings the show up a notch. 
<laughs> yeah, well, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with being brought up a notch. Uh, let me see here. Also, uh, thank you to, uh, uh, to our, our good friend Brian for being here. And Jeffrey, thank you. Uh, a big thank you to Alan. Thank you to uh, Tony. And thanks to Kevin. And to all of you who, you know, have asked how, how did it turn out at the doctor. And I, I you know, it, it, I'm going to try not to bother you about this kind of stuff for at least, as I say, two or three days. Wait till so, tomorrow night. Yeah, <laughs> maybe tomorrow night. Maybe tomorrow night I'll come up with I'll something. I'll bring some down. I'm joking. Yeah, I got, some, I'll, I got some hemorrhoids I want to talk to you about. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, everybody, thank you. Give a, give a big wave goodbye, and we'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. And a good one at that. Uh, and uh, I'm uh, going away now. I will leave you in the good hands of Amy Manuel, who's going to be doing the intersection. And she'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. That's the address. I will see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>